What's up everybody and welcome back to the channel. It's your boy Mello. T.S. Madison and Kaya was a force to be reckoned with. Their popular show, The Queen's Court, had the internet on fire every Monday night. If you missed that historic piece of time, I don't know what to tell you. Now, before we talk about how they came together, let's explore them as individuals, starting with Madison. Now, T.S. Madison's internet fame began all the way back on Vine when she was the BDB. If you know, you know. From Vine, she did various other skits and TV shows. She also had a few shows on Facebook and YouTube that sort of all came and went, but were funny nonetheless. Now, check out a few clips of T.S. Madison to get a better glimpse of who she is. I spelled put a record in this, record. Ooh. Selena wasn't Puerto Rican, bro. Selena wasn't Puerto Rican? No. She was Mexican. Yeah, bro. I love my baby. I love my baby. Will you be needing any condiments? Yes, bitch, I need condiments. Ma'am, will you be needing any condiments? Yes. If I got french fries, bitch, I want ketchup. If I got french fries, bitch, give me ketchup. If I got nuggets, give me some type of sauce. Yes, I need condiments, yes. Ma'am, will you be needing any condiments? Ma'am, will you be needing any condiments? That shit pisses me off. <laughs> <laughs> As you can see, T.S. Madison is pretty funny and has a whole lot going on. Some of her absolute best moments are when she's just in the car vlogging and just being herself. Now, get into Kaya. Kaya is a platinum selling artist who is best known for her hit song, My Neck and My Back. She's also a writer and producer who has wrote for many artists, including Janet Jackson. Some of you may not know this, but Kaya is featured on Janet Jackson's hit song, So Excited. While Kaya still does music, she's known today for her roasting and reading. Now I always say, there is two people in this world I never wanna be read by, and that's Kendra G and Kaya. Kaya is a self-proclaimed professional roaster and she has definitely earned that title. Check out some of her most vicious, reads okay so basically what you're saying is get money bitch get money bitch okay because i, I gotta do respect it. me is what i'm saying motherfuckers and if you don't you don't have to be here you did make that okay so let's talk about a little bit about when you were on rap supreme who am i because they pulled that up like that you 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 me. you got a lot of flag behind a lot of things that you said, Kaya, like and, and i you, see you gotta respect and, me and they pull that up anyway you see me respect me <laughs> anywhere that i be they gonna respect me pay my dues pay my dues pay my dues pay my dues you best to r-e-s-p respect me r-e-s-p Respect me, R E S P E C T. Respect me. And these goals in my mouth, bitch. Respect all of it, motherfucker. Queens of the South was like, Queen, fuck it, I need trying to come and be on your show. Uh huh, he is. Uh huh. Well, let him bring his punk puss ass on then. If y'all want the bitch to come on and come on the show, let him bring his punk puss ass on. He came down to my venue. That I did that 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 weekend. That was my first time ever meeting this punk. He came down there to be a part of my epic Fourth of July blog. Came down there hiding the cooter brown, powder all in his motherfucking nose, and was snorting powder off the bar like bitch. He was Wonder Woman invisible, like he pulled up in an invisible car and had an invisible nose, and he was invisible like none of us didn't see him snorting powder in and out the bathroom and on the corner of the bar. We don't know you. We don't do powder, so we all looking like. Are we invisible or is he invisible? Because this nigga is snoring powder off the corner of the motherfucking bar. I said, well, God damn, this motherfucker can't get, uh, get hot under the cover. I mean, he out here just snoring powder like that. Kaya, I don't know, but you got to get him out of here. He can't. It's customers and people in here. He can't just be out snoring powder donuts out here in public like this. I said, this fuck nigga got a real serious problem. I told Miko, I said, this nigga, the wife said, this bitch is a pile of donut head, and he got to get the hell up out of here, because he's a fucking junkie. He's snorting powder all in public like people aren't watching him. 
He want to talk about every motherfucking body, but this bitch is a drug addict loser. In, in my mind, I'm like, oh my God. I know fucking Dineva ain't trying to roast and toast, and this bitch is a drug addict, can't keep a job because he can't keep the pot of booger sugar out of his goddamn nose. Never liked them no more since then. Sour ass Bobby Lights. We the people sentenced you to a DNA test. See, your access has been denied down the Old Town Road because you've been desperate chasing Lil Nas and he don't want you. So you won't be riding no horses, but you can ride your sissy cauliflower colored ass down to the free clinic to get some penicillin shots, bitch. You came with your ass out at the awards and nobody still didn't want to touch your sick ass because your pussy is coughing, sneezing, and leaking, bitch, just like your cousin Katrina Sour Pussy Harbor. You need to shove a Hall's cough drop up your ass. Your eyes are sinking in the back of your goddamn skull, just like sourpuss. Your asshole spread open like the Grand Canyon from being a true bottleless glowworm cum dump. Hmm. You and sourpuss sharing a double-sided dildo of diseases and desperation and then nothing is working. Nobody wants either of you or them. Not Lil Nas or Lil Wayne. Hell, even French Montana didn't want that bastard hound. He went all the way to Chloe and you know don't nobody want her. Child. Get your shit together. Go and get that throat and that loose asshole swab so you can finally have several seats without itching and a burning sensation in your pants, bitch. When it come to roasting the queen, please come correct. And sour puss, hmm, we heard you and Trick was performing at your mammy funeral and no one was there. And Bobby, if you want to come for a real roaster, wash your cum filled face first, bitch. You a nigga. Remember that. Gag order, you out of order. Vicious, just vicious. Now the Queen's Court came about when Kaya and Madison came together one night and went live. Kaya was answering some questions for Madison and for those of us who didn't follow Kaya, it was our first time seeing her since her hit song. Now, I think one of the reasons that made the show so popular was that it was just so real and so raw. Kaya was completely unfiltered and I think that it was the first time a lot of us saw someone from the industry just being so raunchy. It was also the first time a lot of us saw a trans woman and a cisgender woman coexist in the same space. You know, unfortunately, there's like a war between trans women and cisgendered women. You don't see them working together too often. So this was something completely different and unique. Now, the show itself created many iconic gifs and nicknames. Kyra became known for roasting Trina almost daily, who she nicknamed Sour Puss. Now, I'm not sure where that name came from, but it's just crazy to think about. Another iconic nickname is Bobby Yuckbutt and Toyota and Resume, AKA Call Yo Daddy. Check out some of these funny Queen Quartz moments. Hey, boo. I just wanna know, um, Kai, why don't you ride K. Michelle so hard? Oh. No, K. Michelle just made news. She ride her own pussy hard, baby. K. Michelle, the one decided to put all her business up on the internet for us to be able to be opinionated about it. If she didn't want us to know about her pussy problems, she would have never put it up on the internet. Once you put your information on the internet, it's public information, darling. It's public information for us to roast, read. Wait a minute, Kai. Wait, let's see. And give our opinion on it. Hell, she should have kept it silent if she didn't want us to speak on it. Wait, let's see what sis Girl, gonna say. Girl, next caller. No, no, sis. Let's see what sis. You put your information on. A next caller. <laughs> next caller. <laughs> next caller. The bottom line, bitch, you can't ask nobody about a motherfucking opinion when you put your shit out there and put a story out there for people to comment. That's what it's there for. For me to comment. I want to know why you sucking pussy on Monday and hauling lupus on Thursday. That's what I want to know. I don't give a good goddamn about what you're talking about, girl. I wouldn't know a business if she wouldn't tell it. I wouldn't know a business if she wouldn't tell it. Kenya Moore, whore, is the first one we Kenya need to see. Moore. We would like to say here at the Queen's Court, congratulations. Congratulations to the Kenya Moore whore has getting has finally been married. We don't know for sure because she hasn't produced a husband. Well, I've seen some pictures and things. What her name? Good. I don't know. His name is Bay. Bay. B A E. His name is Bay. What's this real government name? B A E. Bay. Kenya is notorious for not paying her bills. Ooh. If you recall, she was evicted from her home on national television. And she had to move, remember she was dancing around in the wedding dress and all that. Yeah. And I can't for the life of me understand if she was paying Walter, if she was paying Walter, why would he drop dime on her unless she didn't pay her bill? 
I did an event with her and she didn't pay me. Or she didn't know nothing about it, would call me back. Never got the money. I say all that to say if this new relationship of her, this quote unquote husband is being paid, she ain't gonna pay her bill. <laughs> and we'll soon hear about it all over the press. We will. We will. Right. I don't buy this wedding. I don't buy this relationship. I don't buy that that's her husband. He doesn't want to be on TV. The whole thing is a hot mess. Kaya, before we even start, let me tell you something right Ooh. now. I am not tolerating you tonight talking about Trina. I'm not doing it. Trina is not going to be, I'm not allowing you to do it. I'm just, I'm just. We gonna give South Push full free promotion. How did y'all like the VH1 Hip Hop Honors? Oh did y'all see the show? Oh my now, why God. you always start shit, man? You always talk about what you don't want to talk about, but you know you be wanting to talk about. No, I don't. Because this is the news. It is the news. This is the news. It Everybody watched Hip Hop uh, 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 VH1, VH1 Hip Hop Honors. Yes. And you know, let's open and up listen, the line. And Trina and Trick did represent for Miami. Yes, they did. Did they? They did represent for Miami. Yes. Okay. I will not tell I'm not I'm putting my I'm standing up I'm putting my foot down Kaya. All I want to know nah. is why she had all that glitter throw across her stomach like that like she done had five or six children you know like she had a kangaroo pouch in the front at 43 and she ain't had no children why she why she had all that glitter throwed on her stomach like that you know Regine now I usually don't read children <laughs> No, but she she clarified that she I was nineteen the, and the date were working. Her and her could join twins. They were I don't know who's the mother or who's the daughter. Oh. You know, but I know this: your mammy didn't teach you no respect or manners. Mm -hmm. That's one thing that I know. Because baby, one thing you need to know is don't you ever, in your nineteen years of living, try to get into a ring with a professional roaster. See, that's where you fucked up at, and your mammy should have told you. But see, they ain't taught you nothing. Your mother or your grandmother <laughs> ain't taught you nothing because they should have warned you about coming into this street with all these. 16 18 wheelers that's going 180 miles an hour you're gonna get bam boom and crashed and ran over you got to know what you're dealing with now i know you're supposed to defend your mother that's your mother and you're supposed to protect and defend your mother because no nigga has ever done it you have been her husband her sister her friend you have been everything to her since she was a little girl including her bread okay her meal ticket okay her bank account. Can you elaborate? Okay. I'm just saying, Regine has always been the adult in that house. She's running around the house with a bunch of junkies and, and purple lip, lips, purple and tongue, as purple as a pit bull, all that weed and bulk and hair on, they've been smoking around there. She has always been the breadwinner. So, you know, what can you understand? She has to protect her mother. I don't I, understand what you mean by she's always been the breadwinner. Can you please elaborate on that? <laughs> it's always been Regine, call your daddy. Regine, call <laughs> your daddy. Regine, your daddy. She was conceived when her mama was 14. <laughs> you know, her daddy was never there. You know, you know, her mama grew up in the trap house. You know, 14, had her, you know. So she's always been the leader of the pack. The meal ticket. Yeah, because she was the only one that wasn't high until she got 16 and started smoking with her mama. You can look at her lips black as they is and tell ain't nobody that age supposed to have no lips black as a pit bull. <laughs> but I'm just saying, so I'm going to let you defend and protect your mother. You understand what I'm saying? But you hollering, you working, you need to be working, mama. Because them checks been stocked. You 18 and we already know that baby got your daddy's money on park indefinitely. So you ain't got no choice but to work and try to help your mama sell them bonnets because her, uh, her store, her boutique down there in New Orleans been closed and them books ain't selling. So you don't have no choice but to work and try to support your family. Now there's many more iconic moments, but I just wanted to show you all a few here. Now this show was on fire and it seemed like with every episode, they got funnier and funnier. Sadly, the Queen's Court would come crashing down the night they were supposed to have Monique as a guest star. They were having technical difficulties and Kai became frustrated and then walked off the show. And in one of the greatest things to ever hit the internet, check out what happened that night. We having a little 
little technical difficulties mm -hmm. right away. Now check out what Kaya had to say about the situation. Um, last week, it was a situation that went on with Monique. Uh, she was supposed to be coming on to the Queen's Court. Y'all already know I don't really fuck with Monique or none of the rest of the motherfuckers. I just do me. I do my commentary on shit that's been going on. I've been doing this for many, many years now. Um, a lot of you motherfuckers are newbies. Y'all are just uh, getting a load of the queen. Y'all don't know how the queen roasts and gags. Every motherfucking body, including including your fave or bitches in the industry or whatever else I see fit to want to roast and gag, I do that. Um, and... It's as simple as that, you know what I'm saying? I, I get on my big red couch and we do celebrity roast and gas. I used to do them once a month, maybe, if you're lucky. Every holiday, I would come out with a roast and gas. Came up with the Queen's Court. Uh, you know, was doing the Queen's Court roast and gas. Collaborated a little bit with Sis. Uh, we started doing the Queen's Court together. Brought her in. Everything was working out fine. Until Sus started wanting to let all these motherfuckers in and trying to do too goddamn much. It was just too much. Just let the shit be the way that it is. Um, I felt like if it wasn't broke, don't fix it. Some motherfuckers be wanting to come and see a bitch roasting gag. So let's roast and gag. Got over to Sus' house. Sus wanted to change the setup a little bit. No problem. Make sure, you know, she had shit her way. She wanted to do shit her way. We was in her chateau. So, you know, let us do what she want to do. Let her add some little spice and little stuff that she want to do to the show. No problem with that. Uh, uh, Monique, some shit had went down. Monique was supposed to be coming to the, to, the, to the Chateau live. My first feeling was, fuck Monique. Don't nobody don't get no fuck by Monique. But I know we the people want, want me to ask the tough questions. And y'all know I'm, I was going to ask that bitch the questions that needed to be asked and gag her. You know, we was going to gag and have a good time. Change the plan, switched up. Monique claimed that she was going, she was supposed to be coming to the chateau, but then it was a change of plans on her end. She wanted to do the video on on uh, live. She wanted to do a live, you know, on, on she wanted to Skype in. So I was like, that's cool. Let her Skype in. That's pretty much the concept, the concept that we was doing with her Skyping in with the roast and gas on the show. So this would be amazing for Monique to call, and we'd be saying, how did that bitch get the number? And it'd be Monique when we turned that goddamn camp, uh, uh, laptop around, and y'all fuck around to see Monique on the goddamn Skype. So I knew it was going to be hilarious. Cool, the bitch on Skype in. Okay. But something just didn't seem right about Monique. So I told sis, you know, sis was all excited about Monique coming, and I'm like, fuck Monique. You know, she like, you don't really care about Monique. And I'm like, hell no, you know, fuck Monique. It's, it's, it's something just ain't right about Monique. But, you know, you want Monique to come on the show? Let Monique come on the show. We're going to get some ratings. Go. This is going to be good. It's going to be a big show. Fine. Monique's supposed to be coming on the show. Sis went to these three stooges' house. Now, I don't know because I really don't get into the internet stuff. All you internet people that know me, guess what? I don't know you. I don't watch your shit. I don't give a fuck about you. I'm not an internet girl. I don't give a fuck about what you say on the internet. I don't sit and watch your shows because I'm truly and really not a fan. You bitches are fans of me. But believe me when I say your period coming on every 28 days unless you're pregnant. Blood can drip from your body and I wouldn't give a good goddamn about you. I don't give a fuck about you. I don't go on your page. I don't check for you. I don't follow nobody. I don't look to see what you're doing. I don't give a fuck about you. So let that be said. I didn't know nothing about none of these queens that Sus was going to do an interview with. Or whoever the guys was that she went over to do the radio interview with. The internet interview with. She went over to their house. She did an interview with them. On their live little internet show. So the next time I seen sis, she came back and she said, uh, sis, I went over to the guy's house and they, they, you know, they got this set up at their house and, you know, I like the setup and they told me that they was, you know, that they could come over and that they could set up my house, like how theirs is set up and they could give us a full production like theirs. So I'm listening. So I'm like, fuck them, sis, fuck them niggas, sis. You know, let's just keep the shit how it is. She holler. Now nah, they going to come over and they going to get the shit set up. I'm like, you know. When when we get this deal that we gonna get, let the people the people who do what they do come in to do the production. I already done had the five P Weezy because he he drunk with the camera, losing footage, light and bad. Y'all already know how I feel about DJs and clubs and sound. When the sound ain't right, it ain't no show. If the lighting ain't right, it ain't no show. You're not gonna make me look fucked up and make me feel fucked up and make my fans think I'm putting on a fucked up show or I can't do my motherfucking job when it don't have shit to do with me. It's your producers, 
your directors, your cameras, your lights, your sound, your DJ, your fuck up. So that kind of takes away my control because then I'm, 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 I'm putting everything I got trusting in you to make me look like something. Okay? When I could keep doing like I've been doing the last 18 years and load my shit up in my house on my big red motherfucking couch or in my motherfucking van or wherever the fuck I be at, bitch, I could go live and the bitch gonna tune in. Trust me, the problem is I don't go live enough. The people want me. I trust and believe. They wish I would go live every single second of the day. Okay? I'm not into all that. When I get the platform and get the deal, let me get this TV deal. Or let's get a big platform where they can come in and film the shit right. Until then, if it ain't broke, let's fix it. Leave the shit how it is. Don't come over here bringing these different motherfuckers in talking about they can do this and they can do that. And they can't do shit. We got this. We, we doing it with our iPad and our camera phone. We got this. Gang. The nigga, the sister went over to these niggas' house and did their blog at their house. They done, they done, they done butter her all up, ran game, ran her this game. Oh, we, we can do this and we can do that and we can make your show pop and we can make your show look like lions and tigers and bears. Oh my. And we can come over there and make this happen and that happen. They done rap this game. Oh yes, we can do it. You know, sis, I'm getting ready to let these guys come over and set the production up. Fuck them niggas. Says you don't fuck with nobody. It ain't that I don't fuck with nobody, but if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Them niggas ain't buy shit. They ain't got shit going for their motherfucking self. They ain't no damn, they ain't HBO, they ain't Netflix, they ain't Hulu, they ain't Showtime. These niggas just trying to get in where they fit in. Want to be a part of the Queen's Court like them sisters and punks do. <sighs> so that was a little bit of what Kaya had to say. Now let's check out Madison's side of the story. This is your girl T.S. Madison. I'm here loud, live, and in color. I am the... Uh, Judge of Reason on uh, the hit online tell uh, online show called The Queen's Court, and um, I don't know if you guys woke up to uh, this morning and you noticed that it was a video put out uh, uh, trying to explain like what's been going on with the Queen's Court and this and the other or something whatever came out. Um, I just want to first start out by saying that there are three sides to every story. Uh, I'm Kaya got up this morning. And uh, she made a video uh, telling her side of the story or whatever, you know, which left <clears throat> which left a lot of speculation up for everybody, you know, out there to try to figure out, like, what's going on, like, what's happening, whatever. Because the video I put up last night was very much so, like, what's going on with this? Listen, the Queen's Court is a is an online hit show phenomenon. It, it, it's just it's just what it is. And the, and the chemistry is two queens, two people, two personalities, two Two forces, two types of, of of comedic banter, you know, back and forth, back and forward with each other. That's that's just what it is. So, at the end of the day, I'm just gonna break it down. I don't I, I don't know if you saw the the week the the last show that we did the week where Monique came to the show uh, via Skype and we were having all these. Things. I'm gonna go ahead now and I'm gonna give. Like, like I said, there's three sides to every story. There's there's Kaya's side, then there's my side, and then there's the truth. Okay, I did see some of Kaya video this morning where she was saying that uh, you know that we're not beefing it up. We are not beefing. We're not beefing, bitch. Why would we? Why in the fuck would we beef, people? Why? Why would we beef? Like, why would there be any beefing or any any animosity towards something when we was getting money? So, like, we not beefing. Now there are some issues that transpired, you know, with the sh with stuff with the show. One. I don't indulge in the comment section, you know, heavy with hate or people telling me, Madison, you the, you, you the, you're this and Madison, you that and Madison, you this and Kai is more this than you and Kai is more that. All that stuff comes with the territory. This is how groups, this is how dance groups, uh, singing groups, this is how groups separate because people have their favorites and they, they, they get in the comment section. It's whether you're going to fall in line and you're going to look at that stuff and you're going to, you know, ingest what they're saying or digest the stuff that they're saying that's not my swag okay i know that the show's banter is based off of two people so therefore i was not going to go live last night because we, we done built up the phenomenon of me and kaya sitting next to each other so i was not going to do that last night boom got you now the thing what upsets me is that when kaya made her video this morning i'm not gonna say upset me it just i was a little bit disturbed when Kaya made her video this morning, Kaya was, uh, she said that, you know, she did tell her side about the production was off and production this and the other and, 
and 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 that which I'm not going to disagree. Like there were things going on in the production, uh, uh, the system, and whatever. Let me let me lay all my thoughts on the line first before I start really breaking it down to the lowest common denominator. Fault one. When Monique was coming on the show, I don't give a fuck what none of you hoes <clears throat> down there at the bottom, up under, is talking about Monique. Monique is still an Oscar Oscar winner, Academy Award winner. She is still a celebrity guest. She is still a guest. Our show is Ratchet. Monique was coming on our Ratchet show, which set our show in a different level of precedence outside of everybody else that's YouTubing and X, Y, and Z. The ghetto little... Facebook show that y'all host said wasn't gonna go nowhere. Monique was coming there on the show, and Monique was the hottest topic of that of that week. So, me being the Libra, because we're dealing, I'm, I'm gonna deal with it on, in Kaya's world, Libra and Scorpio. With me being a Libra, I'm thinking we have a guest that's coming on our show that's going to elevate our show to a level of now we're gonna be able to, you know. Now we're going to be able to move in a direction that, that would be great for us as far as elevating outside of the couch, okay? And uh, I said, in, in, instead of me holding my iPad or holding my uh, phone to try to do a, 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 in, a interview with Monique, how about I go ahead, I bought a program where we will, it would be picture in picture, and she and I, she, I, and Kaya would be interviewing uh, her. So I bought that. The program was 700 bucks. Before the program was bought, Kaya and I had discussed Monique coming on the show an entire week before. Now, what I don't like, the stuff what Kaya was saying in her video was she didn't like all the changes. She didn't like all this and the other. Kaya, don't convey to the people that the changes that went on to the show, that they were forced on you or this was something that we did without a collective decision. Now, here's my thing. I personally believe that they were both at fault. Remember, it takes two to tango. I think Madison was so caught up in the glitz and glam that she wanted to do the show at all costs. But a good team player knows when to retreat and when to regroup. Madison didn't do that. She insisted on doing the show even at low quality and production. You gotta remember, it is quality over quantity always. I think Kaya could have handled the situation better and explained why she was walking off in the moment. But to be honest, I would have done the exact same thing as Kaya. Personally speaking, I'm not a person who likes to put out half-assed videos and give you guys lame content. I put my all into every video, every script, and every edit. I've scrapped many videos because I simply don't like the way they look or because I just feel like it's low quality. And on the flip side, you do have a lot of YouTubers out there who go for quantity. They'll give you guys bare minimum videos, no edits, and no substance. When you're really passionate and care about something, you want it to be and look the best at all times. Kaya and Madison unfortunately ended on a very sour note and they still don't talk to this day. They can often be seen taking shots at each other and it's just a mess. I don't think the magic the two of them created could ever be duplicated. It was truly one of a kind. Maybe one day they can come together and realize the magic they had and work together again. T.S. Madison can be found on YouTube and various other TV shows and movies. Kaya has her own YouTube channel as well and is still putting out music, so the two of them are doing just fine. To this day, I haven't come across a funnier duo and I don't know if I ever will. Their era was truly iconic and had the world shook. All I know is, if they ever do return, I'll be the first one lined up to watch. I mean, a guy can dream, right? If you enjoyed this video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up or thumbs down if that's okay too. Go ahead and drop a comment down below and let me know your thoughts on this video. What do you think of the Queen's Court? Would you be here for the two of them returning? And as always, if you're not already, please go ahead and subscribe to the channel and make sure to hit that post notification bell so you don't miss out on any videos as I do upload them weekly. Weekly-ish. I hope everyone has a great rest of the day and I'll catch you all on the next video. Bottom line is we're dealing with facts. Goodbye, bitch. Case closed. Next case.